Hello everyone, let's continue our discussion of frontal lobe circuits and talk about the orbitofrontal cortex. Let's begin with talking about the anatomy of the orbitofrontal cortex, which I'm going to call OFC from here on out. Looking at the ventral part of the brain, this view here specifically is called a basal view. The OFC occupies the ventral surface of the frontal part of the brain. So let me highlight that here. It's essentially the entire ventral surface of the frontal lobe of the brain. So everything highlighted here in blue. The OFC also projects to the magnocellular medial nucleus of the thalamus. So there's considerable variability in the anatomy of the OFC, but generally Broadman areas 10, 11, and 47 comprise the OFC. So looking at a parasagittal view of the brain here, sorry, mid-sagittal, you can see here that this is all OFC. An important distinction is the cingulate gyrus, which is <clears throat> this gyrus right here the one that is just next to the corpus callosum. That's typically where the OFC ends. And looking here at the outer cut of a sagittal view of the brain, OFC is typically going to occupy the lower region there. It's also important to consider that the OFC has considerable overlap with the ventromedial PFC. The ventromedial would be here, in pink. However, the functions of the two are different in that the ventromedial PFC relates to emotional responses and the OFC is more relatable to social behaviors. In terms of function, the OFC involves reward and punishment for taste, touch, pain, visual, and olfactory stimuli. The OFC is also closely connected to the amygdala, hypothalamus, insula, nucleus accumbens, and some brainstem nuclei. So it, the OFC is highly connected to reward pathways in the brain. If you have lesions to the OFC, then you typically see drastic changes in emotion, personality, social, and behavior conduct. You also tend to see a lack of affect as well as socially inappropriate behaviors and poor decision making. A good case study for OFC damage would be Phineas Gage. This was a mine worker who unfortunately had a railway spike go through his head due to an accidental explosion. The railway spike pierced his head here and went through the orbital part of the frontal lobe of his head. Remarkably he survived didn't really have any deficits except for personality changes, drastic personality changes. Okay, so from fMRI studies, we've learned quite a bit about the OFC. Specifically, there's two main ways to understand the OFC. The first is medial to lateral. So medial means middle, lateral means away from middle. So understanding the OFC in this general direction, drawn here in pink. So from the middle, away from the middle. The medial OFC, which I'm going to highlight here in pink, all of this region very closely overlaps the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. That relates to the pleasantness of stimuli for taste and smell. The lateral OFC here, highlighted in yellow, and this side as well, relates to punishing stimuli, the processing of punishing stimuli that lead to a change in behavior. The second way to understand the OFC is from anterior to posterior. So when I say anterior, that means towards the front. Posterior means towards the back. So essentially an arrow like this. Sorry if it's hard to see. 
the anterior OFC, I'll highlight here in green. Processes abstract reinforcers. When I say abstract, that means something like money or self-gain. The posterior OFC, highlighting here in blue, involve sensory reinforcers, and this makes sense because there's considerable overlap with the medial OFC. And last, let's talk a little bit about the neuropsychology of the OFC. Typically, you aren't going to see OFC deficits in testing. You're going to see it more likely in the clinical interview. These patients will have a very disinhibited personality and may say certain things that'll immediately tip you off. However, there are a few tasks where you may see some OFC deficits, specifically the gambling task, more commonly known as the Iowa gambling task. In this task, patients had four sets of cards, and I'll draw it here, one, two, three, four. So if each of these is a set of card, they had four sets of cards they had to choose from, and some of these decks were good and some were bad, in the sense that the good decks would help the patient make money, the bad ones would make the patient lose money. The goal was for the patient to choose cards from decks and make the most amount of money. Regular patients, or typically developing normal controls, would end up choosing decks that help them gain the most money, whereas patients with OFC damage were disinhibited and just kept choosing low probability decks, even if they were losing money. And the last way is through questionnaires. So something looking at frontal lobe functioning or changes in personality that a family member might notice or the patient his or herself.